Let's start with Twitter beef. Back in 2011, I got into a series of useless Twitter fights with a Singaporean blogger called Issue. I was a somewhat popular YouTube comedy turd and making a big deal about how she was always photoshopping herself as well as getting lots of plastic surgery. Without any critical nuance, I just dumped on them for getting lots of plastic surgery as though it indicated a personal shallowness. People's life or bodily choices should be their own, not other people's, and certainly not mine personally. Which, I mean, totally fair. She also posted an example Twitter exchange between us that this is an entirely warranted response to. It would make total sense for her to say to herself, you know what, this fucker is nipping at my heels, saying stuff about me that they have no business saying in an attempt to mess with my business and public image. My hope is that it can become more clear how much the sensational, but not really, let's say, verifiable elements of a story are treated as fact and as important. Now this isn't just a Peter problem, though. The way that evidence gets treated in this companion con game reflects a larger problem of disposal and devaluing of human beings. See issue. This gets complicated fast, and I had originally not planned to include much in the way of specifics about her, but, well, this. You might ask, why are you paying attention to this person in a MAGA hat, Peter? The answer to that lies in another question. What has society decided the internet is for? CSU got a great deal of attention on the internet for various things, like attacking disabled people for having problems with able-bodied people using disabled people's bathrooms, running a campaign to get immigrants banned from working at a tourist attraction because they're rapists, they're rapists, as well as getting into numerous continual arguments about the difference between being raped by a quote-unquote ugly person and being raped by a quote-unquote hot person, sometimes implying people who are accusing quote-unquote hot people of rape were clearly lying and or quote-unquote wanted it or were quote-unquote asking for it. Which nowadays Trump had, capiche? For some reason I thought of my first fight with Tyler. She's gotten worse. And I feel like here there's a distinction to be made about simply getting plastic surgery and marketing it as a lifestyle to a young audience doing surgeries as sponsored content. And the bad guy in that case isn't really the content creator, but instead a capital entity putting up the money and creating the incentive. But still, the lifestyle marketing part of that makes present me at least get why past me disliked this individual, and upon hearing some of the elements of this description, some folks might be starting to feel a bit morally superior as well. This person says bigoted, awful things on the regular, and to top it off, they push a consumerist, superficial existence on an impressionable audience. I, Peter Coffin, had a fake girlfriend. At least... It was extremely clear to everyone but me, the CSU Twitter feud in this catfishing situation intersected pretty hard. Peter Coffin is an American douchebag dude doing YouTube videos, and the videos are like mostly lame parodies or something like that. I don't really know. I can't finish watching even one. He seems to have a problem with girls who photoshopped their pics and put on makeup and had plastic surgery or just vain in general. I mean, I understand most, if not all men, prefer natural beauty, but it's not like I'm freaking pushing my face into his view, am I? I'm so far away from him physically. Why can't he just unfollow me instead of attacking me all the time? So I blocked that moron and guess what? Along comes a chick called Kimi Kobayashi, who also starts insulting me. She is Peter's girlfriend. 
and she looks like this. She is Japanese, living in New York. How come there are Korean words on the pictures then? And more importantly, where is Peter in all these photos? So I ask on Twitter, does anyone recognize the girl in the photos? Two of my awesome readers helped me. Check out and guess what? She is Korean Olsang. She's not Japanese, not Kimi Kobayashi, and most definitely not dating Peter Coffin. Her pics were stolen from her website by a complete loser and used as a pawn for his own validation and popularity. In other words, Peter stole her photos and created a fake profile to make it look like she's the girlfriend. Ha! Busted! So here begs the question, what the F is wrong with him? Around the time that this happened, the Kobayashi profile was deactivated. CSU asserted it was because I knew the jig was up. Also presented was a few archived tweets from the account, which CSU contextualized, so here's more of that amazing doctor. No personal tweets, no talking about girly issues like hair or shopping or boyfriends, and girls who look like Kimmy and snaps photos of themselves to post online will never, ever be so other-centered, okay? Just crude, lame jokes. The jokes sound familiar. Yes, they sound like Peter. So... Let's just be clear here. Well, I understand her motives, this really sucks. Why? Because it's just an appeal to something shitty that too many people uncritically accept as part of the world. <laughs> Can you imagine that effer flirting to and fro with himself and thinking he found his soulmate? Lame! It's so ridiculous that people would believe that that's two different people tweeting each other back and forth. The writing style is exactly the same. There are two sides to the argument and neither side has hard proof. Though the term catfish had existed for quite a while, it wouldn't enter the cultural mainstream until almost two years after this incident when the MTV series debuted. Even so, people either have to believe me or believe CSU. This shit blew up. I feel like the number of people who have received thousands of tweets an hour, especially for more than a few hours, is pretty low, relatively speaking of course. I am one of those people, and I've been told to kill myself so many times that I may have become some kind of patron saint without knowing it. Not only did the YouTube community turn on me, making it very hard to find any kind of design, editing, or voiceover work, the things I do outside this, but in the normal employment sphere, people who googled my name walked away fast. I was bad news. I didn't have a job for a few years, I lost my home, and was eventually able to work low-paying jobs, though these would never afford me the ability to climb out of the I lost everything and had no or almost no income for a few years hole. And eventually they'd become hostile work environments anyway because someone found out about what happened and would start making everything about that. 